Our text for today is taken from the first book of the Record of Kings, the third chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, <coughs> because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart. To judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is true. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Over the last three weeks, we've seen a progression. Two weeks ago, we studied the word of God that said that we are free, free from the slavery of sin, free to be children of God. Last week, even though I wasn't here, I know that I worked on the sermon, and I know that the sermon was based on the Lord's prayer and prayer in general, that God gives us the ability to call upon him as dear children ask their dear father. Our text for today goes one step even further. It shows us an example, an incredible example, of how we are to live as Christians in this world. Some would call this a sanctification text, and they're right in saying that. There are many texts in Scripture, some that really point out the fact that Jesus had to suffer and die for our sins. And then there are some kind of on the other end of the spectrum that say, you know what, because Jesus died because you are created new. How does God want you to live? And that's what one of the things that we see prominently in our text for today. So, if you came up Pound an old gold lamp and rubbed it and a genie popped out, what would you wish for? If you're like me, you've heard hundreds of jokes that go through this. Whether it's picking on Polish people, Norwegians, Swedes or blondes, you've heard a number of jokes in this area, right? What would you wish for? And the joke is that the last one, the foolish one, often undoes what everyone else has wished for. And that's the predicament that God gives us in this text. He gives Solomon. He comes to Solomon. And it's interesting. Solomon is the next patriarch. 
just like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God came to each one of them in succession. Now that David is gone and Solomon is king, what do we see in Solomon? If you read the verses prior to our text, Solomon is out by the Ark of the Covenant sacrificing to God. We have to remember that David tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, but it didn't work very well. The priests, instead of carrying the Ark of the Covenant, put it on an ox cart. And as it slipped, one of the priests grabbed it to catch it and died immediately because he wasn't supposed to touch it. Only the poles that were to carry it. And because of that, the priests were afraid of bringing it into Jerusalem, so they left it in somebody's barn. And it's at this place that Solomon goes to sacrifice to the Lord. And the sacrifice in Solomon's attitude was pleasing to the Lord. And the Lord throws out to him one of these questions. What would you wish for? If you could have anything, what would you wish for? Solomon's request is a great request. It's impressive to the Lord. But where on our priority list would that same kind of thing take precedence? I don't know about you, but in less than a week, by this time next week, Julie and I will be empty nesters. And we're looking at tuition for three kids, one in college and two in high school. And if God came to me and said, pick something that you would wish, I would look for money. Lord, I would love to be that person that gets the $5,000 a week for life. I could put that kind of money to good use. I'm not a big country music fan, but going fishing with my children over the last couple of weeks, I've heard a song more often than I need to, that money can't buy happiness, but it can buy me a boat. And a truck to pull the boat. What would we wish for? What are the top things that come to our mind? Relationships? A long life? That was mentioned in the text. How many other things would we wish for? And here we have Solomon's request. God comes to him and says, anything you wish for, I'll give to you. And Solomon didn't put himself first, didn't put his riches first. He put other people first. He said, Lord, you've given me a task. You've put something in front of me. What I wish for is that I live up to the duties that you give to me. What an incredible request, huh? How many of us would actually ask, well, Lord, just let me go and relax for the rest of my life. Where I can do the things that I like to do, where I can go fishing every day. Except on rainy days and I can repair all the poles that everybody else breaks on those rainy days. Solomon doesn't put himself first. He accepted the job that God had put in front of him, and so he asks for God's help. Lord, make me wise. 
Give me an understanding so that I can rule over your people justly and judge them accordingly. And we know and have heard of Solomon's wisdom, haven't we? That he knew his audience. He understood people. And when the two women, both claiming to be the mother of the child, came to him, he banked on the fact that the real mother would rather lose her child than to see him dead. And so when he ordered that the child be split in half, he was banking on the real mother saying, no, 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 spare my child. God gave him the wisdom that he asked for in our text. The ability to do well the job that God has put in front of him. And so as we look at this awesome request, the awesome faith, what does God want us to get from this? Well, we have to go back to the beginning. We can't just always jump to the end. We have to go back and understand. Solomon knew that his salvation was in the Lord. He had been raised by a father who was a wonderful Christian who had written many of the Psalms that we have in God's word. Who had been, even though he did make mistakes, for the most part, he had been a true believer and follower of God. And so Solomon knows that it starts with his salvation. And he reminds us that God doesn't want us chasing after all of these other things that aren't good for us. All the things that this world would tempt us with. <clears throat> and there are many of them, aren't there? How many people live for the weekend and, oh, I've got to go out with my camper and my boat and party. I work hard all week and now I've got to go take care of myself. Live for myself. Are there many things that could lead us astray in this world? Yes, definitely. What are the temptations? There are many. Then it depends on our personality. I like to look at places that are for sale on a lake. Look at new boats. Look at new vehicles. Look at whatever. There are those things that, boy, one day, hopefully, I might have all these things. And what does God say to us? He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we look around in this world, we might think, I don't have that much. And God says to us, you fool, you have everything. In my word, you have everything. You know where you're going. You have security. You have a future. You lack nothing. I have given you my word, everything that you need in this life. And in our text, Solomon relied on the salvation that would be one for us. Things his own father foretold that the Messiah would do. The one who would come from their line. And what's more important here is that just like with Solomon, God invites us to be part of his work. 
Like I said last week, you studied prayer. Well, I'm going to remind you about a certain prayer. When you say thy kingdom come, what are you really praying for? And most people would jump to the end. Oh, that I go to be with Jesus, the kingdom of glory. And if you read your catechism, you'll be reminded that before you get there, you need to come into another kingdom first. You need to come into the kingdom of grace. And so when we pray thy kingdom come, what we're really praying for is that God would bless his word. That it would go forth from us. That we would be partakers in God's work. That God would use us to reach out to others. To let them know too that there is plenty of room in the Lord's house. That God loves them as well. That Christ sacrificed himself for them as well. As much as he did for me. That he loves them as well. And after you've gotten into the kingdom of grace and have become God's child and can come to him and our father. Because you're already in that relationship. Then God says, you know what? Come to my kingdom. My eternal kingdom. My heavenly home. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. After the kingdom of grace comes upon us, then we also know that we are partakers of the eternal kingdom. Paid for by God's dear son. As we look around this morning, there's plenty of empty spaces here. God says, my message is great. Bring friends. Bring more to hear about the greatness of our God. Use me, Lord, just like Solomon prayed. Give me not the strength to get away from the things that I have to accomplish, the things that you have put in front of me, but give me strength. To do the things that you have put in front of me. That I may do them faithfully. Following the example that your son did. In Jesus name. Amen. Now may the peace of. And the comfort of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be with our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Unto life everlasting. Amen. Go to your in